Okay, so we built a Gatsby site, and but we didn't do anything with data yet. We didn't create any kind yeah. of, we didn't get any data onto our page. So that's the next thing to do. How do we do that? Let's find out how difficult that is. Because I have some ideas. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I'm, I'm willing to bet that Gatsby isn't going to do what I'm thinking, but let's see how far we can go. Okay. So we've got our, our site running locally. There it is. Okay. What are we doing Gatsby going through their little tutorial here? Data. Okay. I'm going to skim over some of this stuff. I know what data is. Uh, maybe the listeners don't know what data is, but it's just information. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, 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 okay. Create a new example site. It wants me to create a new website. We're not doing that again. We're just going to keep going with what we have. Yep. So, ooh, is that emotion? What is this? What is? Why is it telling us to install emotion? It's a little bit small i can read oh yeah 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 let me blow it up in fact i'll go full screen like that oh yeah better mm -hmm. so it wants us to install all these typography things again which we already did but then it wants us to install okay let's let's do this actually so tutorial part four i'm not going to install their tutorial but I'll install this stuff. Here we go. So we're gonna install Gatsby plugin typography, which we already have, by the way. React typography, typography theme, Kirkham, Gatsby plugin, Emotion, Emotion Core. Okay. Well, that's installing, let's see what's next. Set up a site similar to what you ended with in part three. Okay, I don't need to because we already have it. The site will have a layout component and two page components, done. But you see this emotion core stuff, that's CSS and we didn't yeah. do that. So um, I don't know, uh, I guess, yeah, we have to do that because of the rhythm two and rhythm 1.5. We do, we actually, okay, let me, let me do that. Snap that to the right. Okay, so the layout component is right here. I'm gonna blow that up a little bit. Okay, so what does it want us to do? It wants us to import Emotion Core. I like to do alphabetically, so I'll do that up here. From Emotion Core. Okay, mm -hmm. and we're gonna import CSS. And it's freaking out because it wants us to actually use it, which is great. So we need to import also this utils typography thing. So let's do that. That's gonna be here, import from utils. Right, utils typography, there we go. And we're gonna import rhythm. Okay, so far so good. Now it wants us to take this div here, which also already has a class name layout. Um, so we're gonna switch to emotion here, so bear with me a little bit, but we're gonna take all these styles and Actually, we don't need them, so I'm going to delete them. Deleting class name styles layout, and we're just going to do what they're doing in the demo here. So we're going to do CSS equals CSS, which is that emotion import. Mm -hmm. And now that we're inside of this, is this is called a fenced code block with these back ticks. It's basically a way in JavaScript to write 
a string, like a long text of character, like a long string of text characters. And in this case, mm-hmm. we're putting a CSS prefix behind this code fence block, which means that it's actually going to run a JavaScript function under the hood, which is this emotion core CSS function. So Top. that that's how you call it. It says when you call the CSS function, you, you you need to give it a template, which is what our fenced code block is. And then you can give it some more arguments. So let's go ahead and do that. It's going to let us type CSS directly into the code editor here. But this is different. So this part, instead of saying like padding 20px or whatever, we're going to say padding like this. Now this dollar sign with the curly braces is a way to, to get out of the string and to say, okay, I'm going to actually put a dynamic property in here, some sort of variable, something that changes or something like that. And in this case, uh-huh. we're in the context of JavaScript because we're not in CSS anymore. And so we're going to use this rhythm function, which expects me to give it a value of number, a number type, which I give the number two, and then it's happy. So that's cool. That's new. We didn't do that before. And then I can also make padding top, like the demo is saying on the right, like the documentation is saying on the right. And I can do the same thing with a rhythm of 1.5. Full disclosure, I do not know what rhythm means in this context. So we are going to learn together. <laughs> oh my God. I do not I'm know curious. what that means. Okay, so we've got this. Um, hmm. The header. Where's the header? This is layout.js, yeah? Yeah. So they don't have a header element anymore. Okay, let's get rid of it. Header's gone. Uh, Children is still there. So we're going to keep that. And we've got a link that goes to the slash route, which is exactly what they have. So I'm not going to change that. And then this h3 we got to get rid of the CSS. I think all the CSS, all this class name business, we're just going to delete it. We're not doing the CSS file anymore. Okay, so the H3 has CSS equal to this. And it's going to be margin bottom, rhythm two, and display inline block font style normal that looks good to me and it says it wants to say pandas eating lots that's the name of this site i guess pandas eating lots oh my god yeah and then we're gonna make this look a little bit nicer I think, yeah, it's formatting, that's good, okay. So that's that link, a little bit messy, but it's messy because we're dealing with HTML, JavaScript, and CSS all in one file, but this is way less messy than something you would see in the 90s because React makes this a little bit easier to read. And the code, yeah, it's col- more organized. The code coloring My helps eyes. too, yeah. You don't have to look into a different CSS file to figure out what's going on. It's all right here in your face. So, yeah. Anyway, so that's that link. We we need to create one more link to the about page. So we'll do that. Actually, we already have it. It's right here. That's my about link. But that's a list link. We're not using list link. We're using just link. That list link was that special link that we created before. We're not doing that. So in this case, we're linking also to about. Um, oh, and this has its own CSS equal to float right. <clears throat>
Ugh. It's not formatting. Is it working? I mean, so far, I mean, I didn't check the, the page. Let's see. So this is the layout page. So far, it's not happy with that because we're importing link list. List link. Yeah, we're but not, we're going to fix that. We're not okay. using it. So let's get rid of that. See? Yeah, it's working. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, so let's go back to the tutorial here. And we're going to look at what it wants us to do next. It says, okay, we're going to the index page, okay? Going to the index page. And we're going to change some things here too. This is going to say, amazing pandas eating things. And then it's going to have this div with an image to follow. Okay, so we go back to the home page and we see amazing pandas eating things. Nothing crazy yet, but we're just following the tutorial because I want to see some data. Give me some data. Okay, so, uh, oh, this is the about page now. We got to fill that out. Okay, so the about page, <clears throat> this says about pandas eating lots and the p tag says we're sorry blah 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 so let's try the about page oh actually i'm going to create a new one here and just go to about so i can just kind of see two things at the same time so yeah now we've got our about page okay what's next i like it now it wants us to go back into our typography file. So far, oh, there's the Kirkham theme. We didn't use that yet. So let's import Kirkham theme from typography theme Kirkham. And then we're going to use that here. And then the rhythm we need to export. So we're going to export const rhythm equals typography. Oh, we don't need to do that. We already export scale rhythm and options, so we're good. But because TypeScript is not aware of what this package is, we have to go into our global.d.ts and say that package exists. So stop freaking out about it. And trust me, which is, Where the, is it? the about page, right? Oh, sorry, the typography. There it is, right here. Now it's up, now it's happy. So if I go back to the about page, it is not happy because it's looking for. Right, it's it's not happy because I I just fixed it. So let's see what's wrong. It Wrong says no. typography theme Kirkham. I thought I installed that. Tycop did I spell Kirkham wrong? Probably. Let's see. I'm just gonna copy it here. This is from my package JSON file. It tells me all the things that I installed. So I'm just gonna lift it from there because I don't want to do a typo and then wonder why things are not working. So I'll paste that right here. It seemed to like that change which means I'll go back to my global and make sure that's the same thing so it doesn't freak out. Okay, so that's a different, this is a different font with serifs on it. But this is so far working. Okay, so, oh, I didn't add emotion yet. So let me go into my Gatsby config and add... Gatsby plugin emotion. I'm going to add it right here. Because I like to keep things alphabetical if at all possible. So these T's are probably going to go down after. Uh, yeah, let's just leave it like that for now. Anyway, um, the next one is options. Oh, 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 my bad. 
So you can do this where you say, you know, this is the name of the plugin that you want. If you want to use mm -hmm. the defaults, that's all you need to do. But it's telling us if we want to have a more customized approach, then we have to say, um, actually, Gatsby plugin emotion is fine. It's the next one that's not. So I need to break a line and say, here's another plugin that I want. I'm going to resolve its name to be Gatsby plugin typography. And it can have options, which I will provide as path to config module. And that is going to be source utils typography. Use that. I'm. Oh, it's already using plugin typography right there. My bad. We already had that. But we didn't have the, the emotion plugin. So I've added that. And I just want to be 100% sure that that's working. So I'm going to restart the dev server to make sure that gets picked up. You might not have to do that, but I just want to be sure. Okay. So. Add the above files and then run Gatsby. Okay, it does want us to restart the server because it says run Gatsby develop per usual and you should see the following. Pandas eating lots, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so let's go back there. And sure enough, we do. Let's go back to global D because we... Uh, I'm sorry, not global D. Global.css because we added this lavender blush background in a previous tutorial. And it looks to me like actually... They're not doing that anymore. So we, we want white. And that matches much better with panda fur. Yes. Yeah. So here we are. Panda is eating lots. That looks pretty good, actually. Big text looks good and professional. Let's see what's next. Um, okay, now we can start querying data. Perfect. Your first GraphQL query. Well, it's not my first GraphQL query, but um, it is for Gatsby. So let's do this. When building sites, you're going to want to reuse common bits, blah, blah, blah. Okay, but what if you want to change the site's title in the future? You'd have to search for the title across all of your components and edit it, edit each instance. It's cumbersome and error prone. Okay, so what are we going to do? The place for common bits of data is in the site metadata object in the Gatsby config.js file. Add your site title to the Gatsby config file like this. Okay, let's go back to Gatsby config. <clears throat> we're gonna wait, wait, wait. We're gonna change the title. Well, what what we're we gonna do exactly? I I, I don't I don't think. Oh I understand. no, it's, it's totally fine. Um, so it's saying normally, you know, when you're building a website, you you have certain parts, certain pieces of information that you want to reuse throughout the yes. website, and so it's telling us we can put certain information that we want to reuse, like the title. Um, uh -huh. We can put it in this file somehow. I'm not sure how it's connected yet, but it's telling me where to put it at least. So I don't, I'm kind of as lost as you are for now because I'm not sure what the next part is yet. Yeah, I'm not sure what they're trying to teach all I, me. All I, know now, <laughs> <clears throat> all I know now is that if you want to store some some data so that in the future you want to change it in one place. Hold mm -hmm. on. Actually, I do know that much. So hold on. I'll, I'll explain Like uh, headlines on um, newspaper, you must change it all, all the time. So what it's saying is like, imagine you had 100 components in a very sophisticated website. Yeah. And this title existed across like 20 of them. You don't want to go through all those 20 files and like find the title and change it. Right, you want to change it in one place. So if you have a scenario like that, you're gonna to want to put that data somewhere common. And in this case, that's in this one file mm -hmm. at the top called Gatsby config.js. You can put that title there and we can reuse that. I don't know how to reuse it yet, but it's telling us that's where we put it. Right? Uh, so okay, let's Okay, let's, let's do this. So you figure it out. <laughs> yeah, so it says title from site metadata. I'm gonna kill the server. And start it back up again because that's what it told me to do. And everything's good. Going back here, refresh the page. Oh, it's still building. Refresh the page. So the title isn't here yet. We haven't used it yet, but it's going to show us how. So how do we do it? Well, keep scrolling down. And it says we need to use a page query. So we're going to add this to the about.js file using a page query. 
Okay. How do we do that? Let's go to... I know. <laughs> You're about to. So we are going to import GraphQL from Gatsby. Let's do that. Oh, always Gatsby, right? <laughs> well, this is there. This is how you know, like, okay, React was developed by Facebook. It's an open source project developed by Facebook. Facebook decided to share React with the world. And I'm very grateful that they did because it's an, a very awesome library and it makes development yeah. a lot easier. But Gatsby is a completely different entity. They're not Facebook. They're a different company. So they have a different product and it gives us some convenience tools to do certain things. And this is one of them. And so we're going to go ahead and import GraphQL from Gatsby. And then um, why is my, I'm, I'm kind of upset that my document is not being automatically formatted, but uh, let's see what happens. Okay, so we're gonna export default, uh, what is this, about page? <clears throat> Sorry, I'm gonna switch this to TypeScript. So we're gonna do const about react.function component equals this and this is where we would put children before but in this case we're going to put data and it doesn't know that data exists yet so I need to actually define that I'm gonna say data is something I don't know what it is yet and then I can say data here and it won't be confused okay and then where do we mm -hmm. put it the h1 says about pandas eating lots. It wants me to replace this with data dot site dot site metadata. Oops, data dot title. So I'm gonna replace this with data site site metadata. Sorry, I'm teaching you TypeScript at exactly the same time. But um, this is how you type things for a component, export default about. Okay, so the reason why you would type something like this is because mm -hmm. you can say data dot site, see how it's helping me, dot site metadata. I don't have to type all that if it's properly typed. I can just like chain it very, very easily dot title that helps me as a developer that helps me to write code a lot faster so that seems to have worked quite well so far but it's not happy about GraphQL because I didn't actually use GraphQL yet GraphQL is also developed by Facebook but Gatsby's doing something with it so they're giving us a different GraphQL import here so how do we use it Let's see. It says export const query equals GraphQL. This is another fenced code block, as you saw before. Mm -hmm. And this GraphQL query is, it's, a, it's also a string, but it's going to basically be you asking the database, asking the API for a specific subset of data. And in this case, you have a query. You're always going to have a query. But you're looking for specifically site, site metadata, title. That's the data that you want. And it's going to automatically give you that data as a data prop to this component. That's how that works. There's some very tricky architecture going on here where it actually picks out this GraphQL query at build time, it sees that you mm -hmm. need data and then it's going to give it to you at the best time that you need it. It's a little bit difficult to explain, but it's so magical that I love it because you have one file here about .tsx. You have, you have HTML, you have JavaScript, mm -hmm. you have CSS, you have content, you have data requirements, everything is in one file. Yeah. The, reason, the reason why that's important. It's all colorful. It's definitely <laughs> it's colorful. Stuff. Yeah. But let me tell you why that's important. Because from a performance standpoint, you can make very educated decisions about 
this is what's called declarative programming where you're declaring what you want not how you want it so you're saying mm-hmm. i want this data but i don't know how you're going to get it just give it to me so traditionally in a web application you might say something like const data equals fetch some url uh and then i'm gonna you know take whatever response came out and i'm going to uh you know actually this is not right i'm gonna take i'm gonna create a new variable called data which is the uh something like uh response dot json and i'm gonna parse that into some sort of object and then i'm gonna take that data and i'm going to use it some i mean this is complicated i have to go out of my way to tell the computer exactly what to do i'm saying fetch this url then then take this data and parse the data and then take this property out of the data blah 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 that's a lot of stuff but Mm -hmm. if you write declarative code and you say these are my data requirements in this very simple graphql query then as a developer you're not concerned how it's provided to you all you care about is that it's given to you and you can do it just like that. So let's see if this works. Yeah. I mean, it says amazing pandas eating things. So I'm assuming it worked, but I'm kind of confused because, oh, it's the about page, right? Refresh. Here we go. About title from site metadata. Okay, let's go ahead and change let's that. Change it. I'm going to say from hello. And it works immediately. That was super fast. Yeah. Very cool. I thought for sure that we were going to have to kill the dev server. <clears throat> because, you know, this is like a configuration file. But I was very surprised to see that that actually changed uh-huh. on the fly like that. That's, yeah, that's super good. Yeah, it sounds easy to, to watch it. I don't, I'm not sure <laughs> yeah. if I'm gonna be able one day to maybe if you want to but sounds like obvious just watching sounds like clear yeah it makes obvious. it seem real easy doesn't it <laughs> so yeah okay so we did that we got the title right how we expected to get it i'm actually a little curious how they did this because this is we didn't even define a database we didn't define an api we just stuffed this data directly into this I guessed into this uh <laughs> file here i'm a little bit mystified by that but it worked so let's see what's next he says we're going to meet a tool that lets us interactively explore the data available through graphql it's called graphql i know what they're talking about and help formulate queries like the one above okay okay so now what do you have a question Mm, no okay i thought i heard you about to ask one Static query. Okay, static query is a new API introduced in Gatsby 2.0 that allows non-page components like your layout component to retrieve data via GraphQL queries. I got a sneeze. (laughs) (laughs) Watch out. All right, I'm fine. Okay. Let's use its newly introduced hook version, use static query, okay? Go ahead and make some changes to your layout.js file. Let's go back to layout. Here we are. To use the use static query hook and your metadata title that uses this data, when you're done, your file will look like this. Okay. So let's give that a shot. Um, We have to import a couple more things from Gatsby. We need to import use static query and GraphQL. Again, I like to do things alphabetically. So we'll put that here and then actually move this after like that because I'm OCD. Mm -hmm. And then we've got a rhythm import. We're good to go there. We've got our React component, but it wants us to, oh, I need to change this instead of being something that immediately returns HTML. 
I'm going to create it into a function that returns HTML. So this needs to be indented like this. Why did it get rid of that? Oh yeah, we're good. That's exactly what I want to see. Okay, so it's conf yeah, it's complaining mm -hmm. again that I'm not using this stuff yet, so I gotta use it. Now I have some place to put some queries. So const data equals use static query. It wants another GraphQL fenced code block. And it's gonna query the site site metadata title again same thing and then in the h3 right here instead of it saying pandas eating lots i'm going to replace that with data.site.site metadata dot title is it is it working that's so cool. I want to see if this works. I'm going to put foo here and I want to see. Huh. Interesting. Um, I don't know if it's working, but I'm willing to bet that it is because that is all we need. So let's see if we go to our layout. Title from site metadata, right there. It works. Mm. Yeah, there it is. And if we go to a, well, we're on about, but we also had that contact page, remember? So theoretically, if I go to contact, I should see the same thing, except I don't. Oh, I do. Yeah, because it uses the layout component that we commonly use across, so that's fine. Oh, good. Yeah, it still works. Cool. So, um, yeah, that, yeah, that works. magic, magical. So here we are now. Why use two different queries here? These examples were quick introductions to the query types, how they are formatted and where they can be used for now. Keep in mind that only pages can make page queries. Non page components such as layout can use a static query. Okay. So it's telling me that this, um, page, the about page, is using a GraphQL query straight up, but you can't do that from a component standpoint, like the layout component. It said it has to use a static query. And it says part seven is going to explain that in more depth, so we'll just disregard for now. But we're going to restore the real title. One of the core principles of Gatsby is that creators need an immediate connection to what they're creating. Hat tip to Brett Victor. In other words, when you make any change to code that you should immediately see the effect of that change, you manipulate an input of Gatsby and you see the new output showing up on the screen. So almost everywhere, changes that you make will immediately take effect. Edit Gatsby config, this time changing the title back to pandas eating lots. We already did this, of course, so. Let's watch it happen again. Uh, here. Pandas eating lots. Save it and watch on the right. Boom. Fast. Very fast. I extremely fast. Yeah. Great. The change should show up very quickly on your site pages. And it did. What's coming next? Next, you'll be learning about how to pull data into your Gatsby site using GraphQL with source plugins in part five of the tutorial. Let's do it while we still have energy. Okay, this tutorial is part of the series. Yeah, we know what's in the tutorial. Yeah, okay, just let's go. Okay, so it wants us to go here to the GraphQL part of the server, which is, if you see when we started our, I'm gonna kill the server again mm -hmm. and start it up and it's gonna tell us two URLs. One of them was our local host port 8000 Come on, do your build thing. Yeah, and then the second one it said was GraphQL. It says if you want to view GraphQL in a browser, then you want to load this URL, localhost8000 underscore 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 
GraphQL. So let's do that. And sure enough, there it is. I need to shrink the text a little bit. Ooh, that's too tiny. I know. I'm sorry. Louisa, oh, are you full screen at least? Because I should be broadcasting like super high quality right yes. now. This is this is like HDR. Okay. No, yeah, I, I figured it out. I can zoom it. Oh, great, great, great. Yeah, I'm zooming it. So the tutorial has put us here now. And it wants us to do a little inspection. So it says we can poke around here looking at the built-in site type. Query my query site type. Let's try it out. So it's saying query my query site. Mm -hmm. Here's what we have. These are all the things that we have available to us. Site metadata. Oh. We definitely want that. And then it should have title right there. And if we play it, it's going to show us the data that comes back is data, site, site metadata, title, pandas eating lots. So that's really cool. Now, the really cool thing about this is that GraphQL is an amazing technology because traditionally in any sort of website you would have, um, nowadays it would be like what's called a REST service. So you'll have these APIs that have various endpoints like little URLs that you can punch in that give you certain pieces of data that you want, right? So let's say you wanted a list of products for your e-commerce website. You would go to something like, yeah. you know, www.mywebsite.com slash API slash products, and it would give you a list of yeah. products. But like add us right. together. And then if you wanted different information, like user information, you would go to like a slash API slash users slash one, two, three, and that would give you user one two three's information right or if you go to slash mm -hmm. products slash five two that would give you the information for product 52 right so yeah you have to be very specific about what data you're looking for in these apis but there's all these different endpoints to get this data and what's really frustrating about it is that in a typical web application you're going to get into scenarios where you're pulling way more data than you actually need. Uh, for example, let's say you just want the product titles. You don't want all the all the stuff like quantity available and the colors and the sizes and the description and the products you might also like and all this kind of, you don't need all that stuff. You just want a list of the titles, right? Well, yes. traditionally, you didn't have a choice. You get everything whether you like it or not. And that's called overfetching. And that's a problem. Because if you're on a web, like a, a, on a mobile device, for example, your, your, your phone, and you're going to a website and you're fetching all this data that you don't need, that's precious bandwidth. Your phone doesn't even need to download all that, but you downloaded it anyway. That's not good. That's not good for the user. That's going to consume more yeah. battery. It's going to consume everything. There's no reason to give somebody more information than they absolutely require, right? So mm -hmm. enter GraphQL which solves this very problem. Because GraphQL is gonna say, hey, look, I have, I have a way of querying for data. And this data can be coming from all sorts of different places. It can have a whole ton of data. And like you see here, site metadata, right? Like I could grab all this stuff if I wanted it, but all I'm interested in is this site metadata title and all it gives me back is that title. It doesn't give me anything else unless I ask for it, like this type name here. Yeah. If I play that, now I get the type name. Site, site metadata is the type name, apparently. I don't care about that, so please don't give it to me if I don't ask for it, right? That is the concept of GraphQL. No overfetching, no underfetching, a declarative way of saying what your data requirements are without being too specific about how it's provided. So yeah, yeah. So the cool most thing, people use that right right now, right? Absolutely not. No? no, most people do not use this. 
this is a very new technology and it's definitely getting popular but so many companies are so invested in what they've already built that it's a lot of money it's very expensive for them to take what they've already built and to take all their APIs and to create like a GraphQL mm -hmm. API so they don't necessarily understand the value sometimes or maybe it's just not worth it maybe they have bigger fish to fry now if you're if you're running a startup company and so you're starting from a clean slate greenfield project you have less excuses for that because you're building fresh right you have the opportunity to use the newest latest and greatest things so you should absolutely think about using graphql if you don't already have something and even if you do already have something you can still build a graphql api and it can interface with those endpoints under the hood because under the hood graphql doesn't care where your data comes from it only gives you the pieces that you ask for so that's why this is it, so exciting is that new like from how much time before you want to know when graphql like, was announced yes let's look at wikipedia graphql was announced stable release okay 2015 was the initial release but the but the stable release was in june of 2018 so it really wasn't ready to be oh, adopted into it's, new. Yeah. it's it's pretty new so mm -hmm. you've got a lot of companies out there that already have a whole bunch of stuff they've already built they don't necessarily have the ability to just dump a lot of money into building a graphql yeah. api they what they have works right so it's not broken it works just fine. Yeah. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? But if you're a new company coming out right now, if you've got a new product, there's really not a very good excuse not to use GraphQL because yeah. of the power. If you're a startup. Right. Starting from right. zero. So the reason why this is so exciting is because, you know, granted, you have this Gatsby config.js file where you have your site metadata title, right? But you you can grab data from all sorts of places like i said existing apis whatever you want and so um yeah that's you don't have to be as a developer you don't have to be terribly concerned about where the data is coming from you can just type your query say what data you need and move on with your life so let's do mm -hmm. that let's figure out what's next on this tutorial because that's definitely when things start to come alive. Okay. So we've already done this. I already showed you how to use the graphic QL Explorer. Oh, it has a dark mode. No, no, no. That's the code editor. I want, gra I want dark mode. Can, is there a dark mode button here? I want one. <laughs> yeah, I want to. It's so bright. I have OCD. Yeah. <laughs> it's like white and, and gray. Doesn't fit. Oh, whatever. It is what it is. All right. So, data in Gatsby sites can come from anywhere, as I previously said, because it's GraphQL. It can come from APIs, databases, CMSs. Those are content management systems, local files even. Anywhere. Mm -hmm. But as far as you're concerned, you have one query requesting data from multiple sources. You don't even know how many sources. It's not relevant to you. All that you care about is that you get what you want yes there's a lot of power in that the magic happening I, I, don't, I don't care how let me let me explain one thing too you nobody really knows notices this that they're not a web developer but if you go to a website mm -hmm. you the browser only lets you open up four connections at a time to various what do you mean? like to, to a different database for example so let's say you have um, a, a an endpoint, uh, API endpoint that gets product information, and you have another endpoint that gets user information. You have another one that gets um, products you might also like information. You have another one that gives you search mm -hmm. results or something like that, right? And you need to hit all of these endpoints when your web page is loading. Well, let's say you have like 12 different requests going on. That's very expensive because what the browser does since it only lets you have four at a time, it opens up four connections 
for that data and then it waits mm -hmm. until it's done with the next one before it gets the next one and so you get into this kind of locking situation where you're constantly holding up the web page from loading anything because it needs to wait until the browser gives it permission to open up another connection so with GraphQL you can you can do the same thing you can get products products you might also like search information user information all with one query you only use one connection you ask for one piece of data and it's done so that's that means you're getting more performance out of your website too because you don't have to ask for these multiple connections now that's not yeah. really a big issue for Gatsby because Gatsby does its performance mostly at build time and so it's going to get that data when you build your project not when you load your page because that would be slow but just letting you know that's one of the benefits of GraphQL one of the many benefits of GraphQL yeah it sounds pretty good definitely. to start off definitely so uh, let's see this is telling us that we want to install some sort of source plugin to fetch data from their source okay for example mm -hmm. the file system source it knows how to fetch data from the file system that's cool I didn't even know that you could do that with GraphQL but okay the WordPress plugin knows how to fetch data from the WordPress API that makes sense so we're gonna add the Gatsby source file system this is exciting I'm 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 ready for this okay npm install save Gatsby source file system mm. and then we need to add it to our config. so we are exploring ourselves <laughs> Well, we'll we'll see. I think it's going to write a JSON file or something. We'll see what happens. Okay, so um, we need to add this plugin to our list of plugins. Gatsby source file system. That's going to be PQRST. That's going to be right here. Gatsby source file system. No typos, please. There we go. And then add it to your Gatsby config. Oh, yeah, yeah, it wants one of these. Okay, so it's going to be um, resolve Gatsby plug. Oh, no, my bad. Gats. I have a problem spelling Gatsby, by the way. <laughs> File system. <laughs> Options. Name, source, path. Okay. You might notice that sometimes I use single quotes. That's because I don't really need to put anything inside of it. But if you use backticks, this is what's called a string template. And that allows you to uh -huh. do this thing that you saw before where you can jump out of, um, uh, I guess, jump out of your string and actually be able to type JavaScript. Like you could do console.login here because it's JavaScript at this point. You're not in a string of characters. So I'm going to access the dir name which is actually the, that's the Node.js, uh, add a comma here. Dir name is a string that represents the directory in which uh, this file is or in which the process started, I forget which. But the point is, it's a Node.js thing that's aware of your file system. It's aware of your, your folder that you started this project in and that's what that represents. So it's gonna be dir name slash source, which points to this source folder right here. Cool. So, what's next? Save that and restart the Gatsby development server. Will do. Come on, Gatsby server, killing you. And start it back up. Okay. Then open up GraphQL again, and in the Explorer, you're gonna see all file and file available as selections. Okay, loading up GraphQL. We have to wait for our, okay, it's done. I'm gonna reload it. We have file right there. And it said all file would be here as well. So we have both of those things that did not lie to us. So, okay, so what do we do with that? Click the all file dropdown, position your cursor after all file in the query area, and then type control enter, which will prefill a query for the ID of each file. Press play to run the query. Um, confused. 
control enter okay so we're going to position our cursor after all file and then type control enter to pre-fill a query for the ID okay oh I think it means I think it means that hold on what happened Position your cursor after all file in the query area. I mean, I think I'm, I'm just trying to understand some feature that I'm not aware of. I know that you can type code here and, and you know, filter stuff, whatever, but it sounds to me like it's telling me to actually navigate here. But it's right type. Filter ID. Yeah, I mean, this would be what we're looking for, I think, filter ID. It wants me to filter by ID. So it says all file edges node ID. So all file edges node ID. I don't know. Here's edges node ID. There, we didn't even have to type the query. We just checked it. <laughs> That's cool. OK. Yeah. So I got my ID. Let's go ahead and play that. And I've got a whole bunch of stuff here, which is probably all the files that I have in my source folder, right? I should have one, two, three, four, five, five, just five. No, there's definitely more than there's that. There's ten. On. There. Yeah, I don't know four. what this is. Well, let's read and see what it is. It says in the Explorer pane, the ID field has automatically been selected. We actually went the other way around, but okay. Make selections for more fields by checking the fields corresponding to the checkbox and press play to run the query again. Okay, let's do that because I'm curious. We've got the ID, but what is the, um, let's see. What I want to know is the name. Global, global.d, index, about CSS modules, about, contact, index, typography, container. Oh, okay. So this is a recursive thing. It's looking at the whole tree of files in here. That's why. Because if I got the, if I added the, um, the directory to this query, you would see this is in recipes source styles. But this one's just in the source folder. And then this one's in source components. So it's, yeah, it's all the files in my source folder. That's cool. Okay. It's like a little file explorer. Okay, alternatively, you can add fields by using the autocomplete shortcut control space, which will show queryable fields on the file nodes. Yeah, I showed that to you earlier. I'm actually want to try this one more time. Oh, that does work. Okay. So I put my cursor right after all file and I hit control enter and it filled in edges node node ID for me. That's what it was trying to get me to do earlier. Okay. We're good. I get it. Try Are you confused yet? No. Okay, good. I'm just conf No, I'm 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 fine. Good. I'm fine. I'm just like, they, they ask you to do something, but there is another way to do like simple, but it's, I, I got it. I know. Um, well, they asked me to do something and I didn't, I didn't know what they were asking me because I thought they were telling me to do it in the query area here. I didn't realize they were talking yeah. about this. Cause they say type that, but you don't need to do it. No, just definitely don't need it. to type it. You just hit control yeah. enter and it's done. Just, yeah, I got it. And then you start checking things that you want things that you're interested in, which is really cool. Okay, so try adding a number field to your query, press control enter. It wants me to add a number field? What's it talking about? Oh, a number of fields <laughs> to your query. Yeah, we already did this, it's fine. Okay, the result is an array of file nodes uh, or a graph. Each file node object has the fields you queried Pen for. And name for mm -hmm. Yep. So we're going to build a page with a GraphQL query. Um, building a new page with Gatsby often starts in GraphQL. 
we need to sketch out the data query by playing in GraphQL and then copy this to a React page component to start building the UI. So let's try it in source pages myfiles.js. Okay, we're going to create a new file myfiles.tsx because I don't do JavaScript, I do TypeScript. Okay, so how do we do this? Oh, that's a lot of code I don't want to type. So I'm going to copy it. But I need to say const my files react function component equals that. I need to tell it what kind of data. I can have and then need to export that okay so our TypeScript page should be happy it's not happy with layout because layout is not a default export that was my bad but there we go okay fix it fixed it yeah because remember I had that index file yeah you know to say I can just import directly from components and it'll give me the whole list of components right here. Container, layout, mm -hmm. user. I don't need to look it up. It's just right there. So layout, Dunsky. We have a new That's page. That's the magic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Love it. So we've got a new page um, called my files. What do we do with it? It says console.logdata. Okay. It's doing mm -hmm. the relative path, the pretty size, extension, the birth time, from now true. Okay. So I'm assuming I can just go to, instead of slash about, I can just go to my dash files. And sure enough, I can. But I'm going to clear this out. And reload the page. And you can see all file is here with all my edges and nodes. So I just console.logged it here on line eight. And that's giving me all this information right here in my, in my console, in my developer console in the browser. So it tells me the file size and everything. Cool. So what are we going to do with this information? Well, We are going to, we already did this. We already did this, okay. The shape of the data matches the shape of the GraphQL query, obviously. We're gonna add some more code inside of the layout. Instead of it saying hello world, it's going to be this data. It's gonna say my site's files, and it's gonna be this table of information. Ooh. I'm kind of regretting using TypeScript here for demonstration purposes because it really wants to know what all mm -hmm. is in here. Data all file edges map. So oh. all file edges. It's going to be uh, an array of, I guess, nodes. Well. Okay, node is gonna have all this stuff. So I can add that to the data type here. It's gonna be relative path, that's a string. It's gonna be pretty size, whoa, that's a lot of T's. Size, that's a string. Extension, that's a string. Birth time. I'm guessing that's a string. And then I'm going to sort it. OK, so you see what happened here? Too I've got. What's that? Too much time on my. <laughs> On what? On this, trying to fix this part. 
No, no, no. Okay, so here's the thing. I told my component that I'm expecting data and that it has a number of edges, which is an array of nodes. And each node has a birth time, an extension, pretty size, and relative path. Now, with all of that data, if I hover over this data coming in, TypeScript mm -hmm. knows exactly the shape of that data coming in, which is really useful because here... I want to do data.allfiles.edges.map and then node. And it knows that the node's data type is birth time, extension, pretty size, and relative path. That type information is super helpful when you're just trying to like mm -hmm. use an object and you want to know what data is available to you. So, I mean, this is probably not exactly where I would want to put this type information. In a real application, I might have it somewhere else reusable. But for the purposes of this component, it's actually pretty useful. Had this not code, had this code not been provided to me, it's very useful that I could just be like, well, I've got a, a table cell here, and I've got my node. Uh, yeah, birth time. That's what I want. See, I mean, I don't have to look that up. Anyway, we're done with that. Let's see what the page looks like. Check that out. These are all my files. That looks so cool. Are you seeing this? Mm-hmm. Good. All right. What's next? Let's do this. We're going to go. Yeah, we went there. We saw it. It's cool. What's next? What's coming next? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. So now you learn how to search. It says we're ready for tran uh, for part six, which is the transformer <laughs> plugins. Okay. All right, we're going to part six, I guess. Okay, transformer plugins. Oftentimes, the format of the data that you get from the source plugins isn't exactly what you want to use to build your website. The file system source plugin lets you query data about files, but what if you want to query data inside files to make this possible? Gatsby supports transformer plugins, which take raw content from source plugins and transform it into something more usable. For example, markdown files. Markdown is nice to write in, but when you build a page with it, you need the markdown to be HTML. So we're going to add a markdown file to our site at sweetpandaseatingsweets.md. Okay. Mm. Sweet pandas. Eating, eating sweets. sweets.md and okay this is going to be become our first markdown blog post now louisa markdown is a really cool file file format because it takes away the complexity of html usually and lets you have a very easy a very clean like writing style as a writer you're going to appreciate yeah. this because it looks really nice uh, it's just a lot easier on the eyes to read than an HTML document. It's not nested like an HTML document. Yeah. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, let's it's going to simplify even more. Yeah, we're going to copy this and paste it right here into our markdown file. And as mm -hmm. you can see, we've got a title and a date to, our, to this particular, um, I guess, post. It says pandas are really sweet. Here's a video of a panda eating sweets. And then this is actually HTML because markdown does support HTML, but check this out. I've got a plugin in VS Code which allows me to view, mm. which allows me to preview a markdown file. So I'm going to do Control Shift P and I'm going to type markdown. It says markdown open preview to the side, which I do. And then it says pandas are really sweet. Here's a video of the panda eating sweets. Some content has been disabled in this document. And I'm going to allow, ooh, what am I allowing here? Allow insecure local content. Mm, well, I can do it, whatever. Oh. Uh, let's see what happens if I just do this again. No, it really doesn't want to show me anything. Okay, well, it's not working for the, the iframe, but that's okay. 
It's okay it's because we happened. have we have hot reloading. What's not happened? I was trying to show you like okay, let me tr do this one more time because I'm gonna show you. So okay, markdown. I can have a title like this. Title. Mm -hmm. I can have a subtitle like this. And Markdown will format it in a bigger or smaller text depending on what I have. And I can do all sorts of stuff with Markdown, like a bulleted list. Like one, two, three. Thus, I'm not good. Okay. And then it creates a bulleted list. See that? So I can type right here. And in real time, I can see how Markdown will process that, how it will display it. Mm -hmm. And that's just an extension that I have installed in VS Code. I believe it's probably just called markdown preview or something um it says it's let's see maybe that's built into my into vs code actually you might not have to install anything that's cool anyway i was just showing that to you because that's another way that you can you can uh see things without actually running it so but we have hot reloading so we don't really care that much about that because we can just look at it over here and see what it looks like. Yeah, it's but, direct from the side. But we can't do that yet because the whole point of this tutorial is that it wants to have a, uh, a transformer that says, okay, here's a markdown file. Here's how you convert it into an HTML file. I believe that's what we're going to do. So let's see what how we do that. We've already got Gatsby source file system. It's always scanning for new files. We're going to add another transformer. G npm install dash dash save Gatsby transformer remark. Boom, bada boom. And then we need to add one more plugin to our Gatsby config, which I will do. Let's see, Gatsby plugin typography. No, no, no. It's not that one. It's this one. It's remark. Gatsby Transformer Remark. Save that. And I'm going to see if I, I... I did not kill the development server. I'm curious if it just works. So I'm going to just refresh this. All site. Oh, all markdown remark. Okay, so it should show up here and it doesn't so I think I do have to restart the dev server refresh there it is all markdown remark right there oh that's cool yeah so how do we use that? Yeah. Markdown remark. Oh, okay. So that would be this guy down here. Markdown remark. HTML. Look at that. Check that out. It converted it, that markdown file, it converted it into HTML here, into this string. So I think, yeah. I think Gatsby's going to show us what to do with that string. So let's do it. Oh, exactly the same. That's so good. So satisfying. I kind of, as you can tell, I kind of know what they're going to say next. <laughs> so I'm like getting ahead of myself here. But yeah. Okay, so we've explored it. It's cool. Let's do it. Create a list of your site's markdown files in source pages index. Here's my index. Now you have to create a list of your markdown files on the front page. Like many blog posts, you want to end with a list of links on the front page pointing to each blog post. Yeah, of course. So we're going to replace this file with this code. That's a lot of code, so I'm definitely not hand-typing Oh, my God. Okay, so let me go back to the index file. Yep. I'm just going to paste it in there and then fix any errors because there will be some. Layout, as you know, does not have a default export, so I'm going to fix that. Data is not defined, so I'm going to say const um, index 
react.function component. Data. I need to export default index. And what's red right now? This node. It doesn't know what the node looks like because it needs all markdown remark, edges map. All markdown remark. Edges array node. Uh, oh, all markdown remark total count. That's going to be a number, clearly. And so now it's happy with that. But for each node, we have a front matter dot title. Front matter, that's a weird name. We have an ID, front matter dot title, date, and excerpt. Okay. So mm -hmm. it's going to be ID. I'm assuming that's a number. Um, this guy that has a title and a date or something like that. And then there was an excerpt. I think. Let's double check on GraphQL. Let's see what kind of data types are coming back. The ID looks like a string. It's not a number. So I'm going to change that to a string. Um, let's see. Front matter. Okay. Let's. We're going to do a little inspection here. So we've got the ID, front matter, date, title. Yep. Oh, these are queries. Mm -hmm. Okay, so date, title, and then what was the other one? The excerpt right here. Okay, and then I'm going to play that. I'm zooming because it's so small. Yeah, it's pretty small. Sorry about that. But I don't have a lot yeah, of Yeah, but I can, I can read it. Now I zoomed. Yeah, there's so much going on here. I don't want to zoom in too far, but... Yeah, so no, the, it's I, okay. the ID's a string, the date's a string, the title's a string, excerpt, everything's a string. Mm -hmm. So let's just, we're right, everything's a string. That's exactly what I expect. Later on, I'm going to show you a much easier way to do this. But right now, I just have to be really explicit about it. This is too bright, so I'm going to go back to dark. <laughs> okay, yeah. um, it's blinding me, truly. My, my monitor is super bright. So anyway, so we're getting, okay, let's look at the code that they had us paste in. So we're not just like blindingly pasting code, right? So we've got a layout. It says amazing pandas eating things. We've got some data. It's going to show us the total count, which means I assume the total files that I have or the total posts I have because we're looking for markdown files, mm -hmm. right? And then it's going to get each node and it's going to display an H3 tag with a margin on it. And it's going to display the title of that markdown post, followed by a space. Um, and then it's going to get BBB, color BBB. That's going to be like a, like a really dark gray, like a charcoal gray. And it's going to color the date in that gray. So it's going to be like a grayed out date, right? But the title itself is going to be black. I'm assuming, and then the date is going to be kind of gray. And then the excerpt will be whatever the default color is. Okay. And then this query is exactly like what we had over here. I could have just copied and pasted this query from GraphQL right here and done the same thing. Um, the only difference is you can see here, instead of just selecting the date, it's selecting the format string date, date, Month, 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 year, 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 year. So let's go back to GraphQL, and we're going to click format string. And as before, it was just returning this date, 2017-08-10. We're going to do what it did. We're going to say DDMMMM, Y, 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 hit the play button. And sure enough, we're going to get this date that comes back 10th of August, 2017. Okay, that's cool. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like on our front page. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
And there it is. Mm-hmm. One yeah. post. Sweet Panda's Eating Sweets. 10th of August, 2017 in gray. Panda's- Sounds like WordPress page. Yeah. Pandas are really sweet. Here's a video of a panda eating sweets. And then I don't actually see the video. Why not? What's wrong? It's an iframe. It goes to YouTube. Let's see if this YouTube link even works. Because it's zero. It's not a, like, fine bro zero. This is the video that we should see. Mm. Okay. So why are we not seeing that? What do you mean it's a... It's an iframe. So this an iframe is essentially like a web page within a web page. So it should be showing it, but it's not. Um, it's not because frame border is zero if you try and put in one. No, that's just the border. If I put like 12, you'll see it'll... I don't even see the iframe here. I wonder... Let's go back to our page and see if it's even trying to display it. It's displaying... Um, no, it's not. It's it's doing the date, the title, the excerpt, but I think it's going to make us click on it or something. So let's see what's next. Okay, we pasted all that code. This is exactly what we see, so everything's as expected. Like I said, it looks lonely, so we're going to add another one at uh, source pages pandasandbananas.md. Okay, mm-hmm. so new page, pandasandbananas.md, and we're going to just copy this code and put it in there. It's a very simple markdown file. It's got a date as well. It's got some text, and it's got another video. So we go back, and now we have two posts. Sweet. And just so you know, maybe I'm jumping ahead of myself again here, but... Just so you know, I think you can actually do like a query, like a query here, sort, and you can sort by like date or something. So like you, if you wanted these articles to be sorted by the formatter date, you could do that somehow. I'm not a super pro at GraphQL. I just understand it conceptually. Anyway. Mm -hmm. So we've got that, which looks great. Okay. What What about the video? I know. We're just calm down. <laughs> I'm playing. Okay. So uh, let's see. This is, it says the order of the posts is wrong. Oh, I was getting ahead of myself. It's talking about sorting right now. So. Mm. Okay. How do we do it? In your index page GraphQL query, we're gonna change. It's exactly what I've shown you before. Sort fields front matter date. Order descending. That goes on all markdown remark. So I'm going to go back to index, back to this query right here, and we're going to change sort fields front matter date order descending. You could do ascending, and that would reverse it. So let's see how that looks. Cool. So the most recent post is at the top. If I delete that, that sorting mechanism, it gets reversed. So we don't want that. We want to go and sort it by the date. I'm so glad that they actually covered that. Okay. So try opening GraphQL and playing with different sort options. No thanks. But now you know that's on your tool belt should you ever need it. Okay. For more documentation, yeah, okay, whatever. Now we want to try creating a new page containing a blog post and see what happens. Um, no thanks, I'm not going to do that either. What's coming next? Well, now it wants us to create actual pages for markdown files, which is where the video is going to show. So, we're going to need to programmatically create a page from data. Gatsby is not limited to making pages from files like many static site generators. Gatsby lets you use GraphQL to query your data and map the query results to pages, all at build time. This is a really powerful idea. You'll be exploring its implications and ways to use it in the next tutorial where you'll learn how to programmatically create pages from data. Let's do it. Do you still have energy, Louisa? 
Yeah. I do too. I'm going to drink though. <laughs> what she's drinking? Water. What a healthy drink. Water. Yeah. Okay. I think this is the last section that we're going to do um, tonight. But I hope you're enjoying it. Okay. So how do we display, display that freaking video, right? Okay, this tutorial is a part of the series. We know what's in this tutorial. Yeah, we know what's coming. Okay, create slugs for pages. Perfect. I like this. Okay. A slug is the unique identifying part of a web address, such as the tutorial, like slash tutorial slash part Perfect. seven part of the page. Now, oh, yeah. slugs are actually extremely important for search engine optimization. I love that. Because if you have a page and you have a really dirty URL that, that's horrible that nobody can remember, that's not good. But if it reads well and if it represents the content well, you actually get ranked higher on search engine results. Which means Google will say, hey, this page, this website is actually following best patterns. And so we're going to give them a better score than this other website who has not been as careful about how they do that. So it's really important to do these tiny things if you want your website to get higher search results. Okay? That's so, good. Mm -hmm. So how do we do it? Okay, it's referred to as a path, but this tutorial will use the term slug for consistency. Okay, so creating new pages has two steps. Generate the path or slug for the page. Create the page. Okay. Often data sources will directly provide a slug or path name for content. When working with one of those systems, for example, a CMS, content management system, you don't need to create the slugs yourself as you do with markdown files. But we're creating markdown files and we have to tell it what the slug is. So to create your markdown pages, you're going to learn to use two Gatsby APIs. One is called on create node and the other one is create pages. These are two workhorse APIs you need to use. Uh, you'll see used in many sites and plugins. We do our best to make Gatsby APIs simple to implement. To implement an API, you just export a function with the name of the API from Gatsby-node.js, which we do not have. We have Gatsby browser.js, we have Gatsby config.js, but we do not have Gatsby node.js, so I guess we should create it. All right, so here's what we're going to do in that. We're going to put the file there, which we did, and we're going to... Oh, actually, I'm going to do TS because I'm a TypeScript developer. Rename and paste node. Yes. Okay. Now, this is interesting because in JavaScript, you don't really have information about the types of things. Like this says node any, and I'm not getting any information here. I don't know what that is. But let's see if we can figure this out with TypeScript because we might be able to. So I'm going to import something from Gatsby, but I don't know what it is yet. What I do know is that it's probably going to be, it's probably going to have the word node in it. Maybe it's just Gatsby node. We could try that. I'm going to put colon Gatsby node. And then this is going to be node to internal type. Node dot dot dot. I'm not getting any help here. Oh, because I did it wrong. Gatsby node. This is going to be um, like this. Node Gatsby node. Look at that. Here we go. Node dot internal nope doesn't work it's the wrong object oh look there's on create node perfect on create node says that the first argument is a create node args like that so i know through typescript inspection that what i need to import is actually called create node args can i do that mm -hmm. And I can, perfect, awesome, I love it. So I paste that here, and now. It's already done. It, it's typed, which means I have all the information that I need 
right there at my fingertips. I know I'm not blind anymore. I know what I'm dealing with. And I love to not be blind when writing code. So, awesome. Okay, so what have we just done? We created this file. So on create node function will be called by Gatsby whenever a new node is created or updated. Um, okay, not sure what that means in this context. Stop and restart the development server. I can do that. As you do, you'll see quite a few newly created nodes getting logged to the terminal. Yep, site page, I did, I saw that. Uh, on the next section, you're going to use this API to add slugs for your markdown pages to markdown remark nodes. Okay, and so we're going to add this. Okay, so we've got our node, and we're going to say if node.internal.type equals markdown remark. And if I scroll up, you'll see we had site page. Look at my console down here. We had site page, markdown remark, file. We don't care about any of that stuff. We just want the markdown remarks because those are the those are the uh, markdown files. So that's what it's doing here is we're creating a filter. We're saying go through all the nodes and only the markdown remark nodes do I want to actually console.log node.internal.type, mm -hmm. which... Yeah, so you want to use each markdown file name to create the page slug. So pandas and bananas.md will become slash pandas and bananas. Right, because we didn't actually create pages yet. We just have like a blog post thing, but we don't have a way to get yeah. to the page yet, right? So this is going to tell us uh -huh. how to do that. So how do we do this? Well, to get it, you need to traverse the node graph to its parent file. And then that contains the data that you need about the files on the disk. And so to do that, you modify your function again. So we say const file node equals get node. Uh, what's get node? That must be an import, right? No, what is get node? Where's that coming from? Oh, it's right here. Where? Perfect. It's one of these um, create node args that here, I'll, I'll break a line here so it's a little bit easier to read, but you remember that create node args? Ah, come on, I can't do that. Prettier just reformatted it for me, but anyway, it's part of the create node args that comes into this on create node function. So, um, get node is going to give us no information. There's no, this type is not very good. They need to do better with that. It's not the right type information. Anyway, um, we're going to just console.log and it's going to log a new line followed by a file node dot relative path. Okay, now after restarting your development server, let's do that. You should see the relative paths for your two markdown files printed to the terminal screen. Mm -hmm. Do you see them? Sweet pandas eating sweets mm -hmm. and pandas and bananas .md. They're repeated for some reason, but yeah, there they are. Success. Now you'll have to create slugs. As the logic for creating slugs from the file name can get tricky, the Gatsby source file system plugin ships with a function for creating slugs, so let's use that. Okay, the name of the function is... Hmm? Pages? No. Um, get node. What was this? Create file path. Where's create Const. file path coming from? Hey. I don't know where they're getting create file path. Oh, from require Gatsby source file system. Okay, so let's do import from Gatsby ah, source file system. And we're going to import create file path. Sweet. TypeScript gave us. We have info. Cool. So I think right here it wants us to do. Um, 
you know, this is driving me nuts. It's got like, I've got inconsistent indentation here. I'm going to um, create a new file called editor config. And it's going to say, hey, in this project we use tabs. It's just going to tell me this kind of information so that I don't get into this mixed environment again. If you have more questions about that, mm. I can get into it, but it's just bothering me. So, um, oh, let's see. No, <laughs> let's see. No. <laughs> okay, so we're here. Console.log. I just want to see that happening. Create file path. I'm curious. Yeah. We got node, get node, base path is page. What was it? Pages. So that's what it looks like. Okay. The function handles finding the parent file node along with creating the slug. And then you run the development server again, of course. I can't stop it. Okay, there we go. And what do we see? We see slugs. Again, repeated for some reason, but there they are, slugs. Cool. And we do. So now we can add our new slugs directly onto the markdown or mark nodes. And that's powerful, as any data that you add to nodes is available to query later with GraphQL. So it'll be easy to get the slug when it comes to time to create the pages. To do so, you'll use a function passed to your API implementation called create node fields. This function allows you to create additional fields on nodes created by other plugins. Okay, so we're going back to Gatsby node.js and we got our slug. That's my slug, I guess. Mm -hmm. Then we create node field, create node field. Um, Where's that coming from? Oh, it's coming from actions. So it comes from here. I'm just going to leave it actions. So actions.create node field. Node name slug and value slug. Save that. Yeah, in fact, uh, since I'm using the slug immediately, I'm just going to put it closer to the implementation and get rid of that variable. There, it's all inline. So we're creating a node field. This is for GraphQL. We're creating a node field that says, hey, GraphQL, if you're interested, I have this slug that you might want. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think you will be interested because we're going to make something with it. So restart the development server again. And then we're going to see our new slugs. So we have all mark, down, or mark, edges, node, field, slug. So let's go there. Edges, node, field. I don't see, what was it? Yeah, no. Edges node fields slug. Fields. Oh, this fields slug right there. Boom. Done. Bam. Love it. So right after excerpt, we can add fields slug. Oh, but we're not going to do that yet. Okay, so now we need to create a new page. So in the same file, we're going to add a create file path. Oh, we already have that. We're going to do... What are we doing? Oh, exports.create pages. Okay. Um, hmm. It says exports.create pages, but actually that's like an older JavaScript way of doing it. So I'm doing the newer way with TypeScript. I just do export const 
create pages equals async. Um, actually, I'll even do export function create pages export async function create pages. It's gonna have GraphQL actions. Um, create pages, create pages. What? I think I have to do this. I'll just, I'll copy the rest. Yeah, it doesn't like that. I need to, oh, the, the problem is I don't know the type of this GraphQL Actions stuff going on. So um, create pages, I need to import it somehow. So I don't know what to look for, but I'm gonna say create pages args maybe. Yeah, look at that. That's exactly what it is. Create pages args. Cool. Yeah, so now this GraphQL type is properly typed. As you can see, it knows exactly what type this is now. So I love that. Um, but we yeah. haven't used the actions yet. So we're, we're creating a result. Um, we're going to do a GraphQL query. We're going to look for all the slugs. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to just log those out. Um, let's skip the logging. We already know what it's going to say. So let's just skip forward. Okay, so... Okay. Yeah, we're not going to log. Uh, source templates. We want to create a directory at source templates. And then add the following file named blogpost.js. So, new file, blog-post.tsx. Okay, and this is what it's gonna look like. So paste that in there. And, oops, get my layout in there. And since this is called blog post, I'm gonna say const blog post. Clean. Everything's happy. Okay, what do we do with it? Mm hmm. Okay, so we're gonna go back to Gatsby Node.js. Yeah. And we're going to import path because we're gonna start doing file I/O. Remember the reading and writing files yes, and stuff. That's what they asked. Yeah. yeah. So we're gonna do something like that. So const path. Oh, sorry. Import from path. Okay, what do we want from path? We want path.resolve. Okay, so I'm just gonna import, sorry. I'm just gonna import resolve because that's the only, I don't want the whole path library, I just want the resolve part of it. So here we go, and we're gonna add under create pages, we're gonna grab create page from actions. Okay, I don't need to grab it, I'll just type it. So here we go. Okay, result. What's result? Oh, yeah. Hmm. What's where's the website? We're not there yet. Trying to uh, clean up the code here a little bit. So, blog post dot ts. Okay, result of data. Unknown any. Okay, I think we can go to the, 
the other page that we created, like this one. No, no, what? no. Or... No, 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 no. What was it? It was the, it was the index, right? Yeah. This type here that I created, the data is this type. All markdown, edges node, all that. So I'm going to steal that because I need it right here. Result.data. Yeah, I need to add data to this list. There we go. And now, yeah. Oh, data.data. .data. No, thank you. I guess I shouldn't have done that. for each node. Okay, node.fields.slug. Yeah, <laughs> okay, node, each one has a f has fields, so I'm gonna say fields, which is a slug array, which is really a string array, right? Oh, no, it's not an array, it's just uh, fields is, oh, it's just, it's just a string. No, it's a, it's it's an object with a slug. Sorry, which is a string. Okay, so now it knows the proper type. Yeah. Sorry, I'm a little obsessive about my TypeScript types. I want to make sure everything's properly described. Because if I change something, I want to know that it's wrong mm -hmm. immediately. I don't want to run the dev server to find it out. I want to know immediately that yeah. it's wrong. So um, let's see if this works. It says, uh, go ahead and restart the development server. Yeah, I was afraid of that. I thought this wouldn't work. You know why? Because. Why? Um, actually, maybe it does work. Let me try it again. Well, I was I was concerned that it wouldn't work because my what is this? What is this error message? Base page, base path pages. It threw an error. Huh. I don't like errors. Mm. Hopefully, it tells me what that's all about. I was concerned that it was asking for a JS We're file. Stuck. And that it wouldn't understand the TSX file. So I didn't know. Um, but it should be okay. Let's see what happens. It might tell us what's going on. So Gatsby Development 404 page. Uh, there's not a page yet. What? SDF? Restart the development server and your pages will be created. An easy way to find new pages is to go to a random path where Gatsby will hopefully show you a list of pages on the site. Oh. So it's telling us go to slash mm. and then it's going to say, oh, you can't do that. But here's where you can go. Yeah, it's here's not a, that bad. Here's a couple routes that you can go. Sweet yeah. pandas eating sweets and, and pandas and banana, uh, pandas and bananas. My files, everything. It tells you the whole site map here. So that's cool. Um, Visit one of them. Yeah, we saw that, which is a bit boring and not what you want. Now you can pull in data from your markdown post. Change source template blog post. Do, do, do. Yeah. Where's my template? Yeah, here, this guy. And we want to change it to this post. Right, so I need to change this to that. And it says it wants me to do const post equals data dart mark down remark. Again, we're missing data. We're missing um, the shape of that object. So I'm going to steal that from Gatsby node because I know that I already have it.
Data markdown remark. Oh, markdown remark. Um, what's markdown remark? That was this other one. This guy. Oh, right there. Markdown remark. Yeah. What was the <laughs> control enter as an ID? Okay, what do we want out of markdown remark though? Let's see. So it's asking for data markdown remark dot html and post 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 what else post dot front matter title so it wants html front matter title so i'm gonna do html front matter title and now i have this query which is actually very similar to what i need for my typescript type so i can just go ahead and paste that whole down it the whole thing in there and then Add some colons, add a string here, add a string here, save it, boom, done. I've just described oh. my data. So here I'm going to say data, and now I've got um, markdown or mark post. Yeah, I've got my post. So let's go back to their little thing here. It wants me to add inside of my layout, it wants me to add a div with an h1 that's going to have my post dot front matter dot title and then this thing I'll tell you what this is all about as you can see Facebook was very careful about how they named this because Facebook created react and so when you create a react component they have this property that you can use called dangerously set inner HTML which basically alerts you as a developer to say hey Stupid. Don't do this. Oh. Unless you <laughs> absolutely good. have to or unless you absolutely trust the HTML that you're putting here because there's nothing security-wise that we're going to do to protect you against some sort of hacking here in this particular case. Um, fortunately, okay. we have control over this. We're doing the build. We actually do trust that this is proper HTML. In this case, we control the, the query and everything. We're not like this is not a service or anything. So we know that this HTML can be trusted. Now, if you pulled this HTML from some website or from some sort of uh, API that you don't control. Or would, Google stuff. Exactly. This would be a very bad idea because people, mm -hmm. if they knew that you were doing that or if they suspected or guessed that you were doing that, they could actually inject things onto your site and make you do very, very bad things. So. Oh, my God. Security issues are all over the place. You have to constantly be aware of them. And that's one of those things um, that we don't want. So now I'm going to export the query from this page. Um, it needs GraphQL import from Gatsby. So let's do that. Import from Gatsby GraphQL. Here we go. And so, yeah, perfect. So, Is it working? let's see. Oh, there it is. Oh, the video. Yay. Pandas and bananas. Yay. Cool. So we go to the front page. We've got, oh, but we didn't link yet. We got a link to those things, right? That's what's next. So, mm -hmm. oh, my bad. Don't click that. Uh, okay, so the last step is to link your new pages from the index page. So let's go back to index. Boom, 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 boom. Where's index? I forget. Oh, pages index. There we go. And we need to import link from, from Gatsby. And then we're going to use that link for each one of these h3s so here we go boom right here h3 h3 paragraph link so I've properly nested it oh that looks ugly sorry but that looks ugly um, it's wow that's really ugly why why did that happen 
let's see here. Node field slug. Um, I think prettier is a little confused about how to display this nicely, I think is what's going on because it doesn't like mm. these fenced code blocks. So it does look pretty ugly. Not going to lie. No, it's okay. Um, but yeah, that should work. So we're linking to node fields slug because we're describing that. We know that the slug is going to point to a proper route. And so we just do that. So let's go back to... to um, our index. It doesn't like it. It says cannot read property slug of undefined because if you go back to our query, we actually didn't ask for the field slug. So let's do that. Fields slug, right? Is that why? Is that why it didn't work? Let's see. Yeah, it should, it should be. Um, I'm going to restart the server because I feel like something is not working. When in doubt, restart your dev server, right? So here we mm -hmm. go. We've got links. And if I'm, I'm hovering over it, and you can see it's very small, but you can see at the very bottom of my browser window, it says localhost yeah. 8000 sweet pandas eating sweets. So I click on it, and there we have it. Great. I go back, I click on this one, and I get my bananas. How cool is that? You can build like a whole website with this. Yeah, just using this. Yeah. Very cool. What's next? I think we're done. There you go. A working, albeit small, blog. Challenge. Try playing more with the site. Add some more markdown files. What's coming next? Now that you've built a Gatsby website, what are you going to do next? Where do you go next? Okay. Um, you could look at some example sites, more plugins, other people. No. Boom, boom, boom. We finished. Oh, no, we didn't because the next step is preparing a site to go live. Um no, we are alive. We, we already published a website earlier, so we saw that. We know how to publish it. So this tells us how to create a production build, which we did earlier. Gatsby serve. We didn't do that. Oh, that's cool. So you build the site locally like we did before we published, but then you do Gatsby serve if you want to see what that production website's going to look like locally. So instead of running a development mm -hmm. server, it's going to run like a production server almost. And it's going to show you what that looks like. And so that's cool. And then you can audit your, you can see your performance. Oh, you remember when we did the performance, the light ho the lighthouse audit? It wasn't very good performance. What? It was not. The other one, remember? Because we did the e-commerce website and it was like kind of slow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So uh -huh. I'm willing to bet that if we publish this site, we're going to get really good performance. Mm. Right? Yeah. Can we do that? Can what? I just can I just can I just uh publish it like I did before? It was like surge What was that surge command we ran? Oh, here it is. Look. Yeah, just do it. It's oh, look, easy. Look. Surge it's login. Bad. Gatsby build surge public. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Gatsby build Let's just do this really quick. So we're going to do, let's do Gatsby serve. So it's going to be on localhost 9,000. This is the, the blog. Super fast. Cool. I like it. And then. Yeah, let's, let's see the performance. Yes, yes. I'm going to publish it. Uh, with Gatsby, uh, no, 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 it's um, Surge Public. 
like slash public or something search public slash I think because we have a public folder because I did that so I do that it says needy gate .search .sh. okay yeah 100% so we go there published Let's share with friends. I just love it. 